Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Barcelona have just defeated Mallorca 1-0 at home, and we will take that. We will take the three points. I'm happy with that, okay? Was that the prettiest performance? No, not even close. That game, for large parts of it, was actually kind of hard to watch, okay? And it was actually really boring as well. But I'm just happy Barca walked away from this game with the three points. I am in no position to criticize Barca's performance today because this team is depleted with injuries. And again, I'm just happy we walked away from this game with a win and really only one injury concern, which is Rafinha, who left in the first half. But I think, I hope, he'll be ready against, he'll be ready for the match against Napoli on Tuesday because he has three days to recover and it didn't look that bad when he left the pitch. But again, Barca starting Rafinha as a midfielder, Christensen also starting as a DM, Gundogan basically being the only true midfielder out there. I'm in no position to criticize the performance today. All I care about is that we got the three points. I'm going to keep saying that because earlier in the year, I was looking for style points. I'm not looking for style points anymore. Get the three points and get out of the game fairly healthy, and that's what we did today. That first half, it was shit. We created one chance, and it was the missed penalty from, obviously, uh, Gundogan. That penalty, by the way, awful. Gundogan was great this game, especially in the first half. He was fantastic. But that penalty, what the fuck is he doing? You cannot take a worse penalty than that. It was so awful, man. But again, Gundogan has to be taking that pen. I didn't want Rafinha or Joao Felix taking that pen. I'm happy Gundogan took it. And again, that first half was not great. It was not great. Fermin came off of it. Fermin, sorry, came on for Rafinha in the first half, and he looked decent in my opinion. Fermin, just needs to, Fermin to me, needs to work on his, I don't know, his, his, his poise a little bit. He needs to be a little bit more comfortable on the ball at times. I feel like he's too eager to get, he's too eager, sorry, to get rid of the ball at times too quickly. And I feel like if he just took his time and had a little bit more patience, he would see a lot more progress in his game, or we, we would actually see a lot more progress in his game. But again, Fermin today, I thought he looked fairly good. Uh, obviously, like, I, like I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but Xavi wasn't even on the touchline because he had to be, he was up on the on the box because he was suspended for this game because he accumulated too many yellow cards, which again doesn't help the team when your manager's not out there. We had Xavi's brother Oscar out there, but still, man, I'm happy we got the three points. And in that second half, it did it really change? No, we had like really two chances. Lamin Jamal hit the post, and Gundogan had a chance where he was basically not one on one, but he was right outside the box and he had a basically an open net, not an open net, but the keeper was there. It was like he had a chance to score a goal and he hit it right at the keeper. You guys know the chance that I'm talking about, like. It was like midway through the second half, but it doesn't matter, okay? Because then Lamin Jamal comes through and delivers. And this kid is insane, bro. I want to spend this time to talk about Lamin Jamal. This video is going to be mostly dedicated to Lamin Jamal. But actually, before we talk about Lamin Jamal, let's talk about Pau Kuwarsi, the other La Masia talent, 17 years old, and he was the second best player on the pitch today. La Masia is carrying this team this season. And if it wasn't for our academy, we would be fucking lost. We would be in no man's land. Pauku Warsi today, he's 17, I'll say it a thousand times. He looks like a 28-year-old out there. I mean, he's just going up against these big physical strikers, these grown-ass men, and he's making them look like little kids. He's making them look like 17-year-olds. I mean, he's insane, bro. We have, this kid is such a gem. Every time I watch him play, you know what? Like, I'm just happy. I'm happy every time I watch Pauku Warsi play. Fermi Lopez, like I mentioned, was he great today? Nobody also wasn't bad. Every time I watch Fermi Lopez play, I see the potential there. I see the potential with this team. The same with Victor Roque, by the way. He comes off the bench, and every time I see Roque play, he looks better and better, and he looks more promising. He's such a spark plug off the bench. I wish he would have started today. I really did. I love Mark Yu, but today wasn't his best day, obviously. I just feel like Roque brings a different spark, man. And again, he Chavi, like Chavi didn't even didn't even bring him on in his natural position because when he brought on Roque, he brought on Lewandowski at the same time. So obviously Lewo played through the middle, which again, Lewo today was actually, I think his link-up play was actually fairly good. He's been decent over the past couple weeks, Lewandowski, or actually the past couple months. He's been actually not a problem for us whatsoever. He's actually been one of a, one of our bright spots on this team, which again, I shared on him a lot earlier in the year because he deserved it, but now he's playing good. I'm going to give him his credit. Lewandowski today came off the bench and looked decent in my opinion. Didn't score a goal, but still did some good things in my opinion. Opinion. And Roque on the left hand side. I mean, this guy, he's so good. Just taking putters on. He has, he just has this attitude about him. I fucking love Victor. I, I fucking love Roque, bro. I better stop saying Victor because I say it wrong. I fucking love Roque, dude. I love watching this guy play. Gundogan again today was great. I thought Gunde had a uh, had a fairly decent game. Uh, Inigo Martinez looked uncomfortable at times, but I thought he played fairly well as well. Jo Joao Cancelo had some good moments as well. I think the team overall honestly didn't play that bad. It was just a boring fucking game, and there's only so much you can do when you're playing one true midfielder out on the pitch. Honestly, man. I mean, how much can you really do? But Lamin Jamal, 
I wanted to shout out those players before we got into, into Lamin Jamal because he's what I want to spend the majority of this video talking about because that kid is insane. I've seen enough. He's a generational talent. Rival fans can clown us Barca fans for putting too much hype on him. If you watch him play, this kid is insane. That's 13 GA this season at 16 years old, and he's Barca's best player. That goal that he scored today was a thing of beauty. The way he makes space out of nothing, bro. There was no space. He gets the ball on his left, on his left foot and curls it beautifully into the top corner, and that kid is insane. I'm at a loss for words every time I watch Lamin Jabad play. That is La Masia. That is why Barcelona will never be irrelevant because this club continues to produce some of the best talents to ever play this game. And Lamin Jamal is no different. You can book it right here. You can say I'm putting too much pressure on the kid. And maybe I am. I, I, I don't like the fact that we're playing him this much because he's really young and he looks gas in these games. And I don't want him to deal with a significant injury this young because it could ruin his career. So I'm, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers. I'm praying for his health, for Lamin Jamal. I hope he stays healthy, man. That's all I care about, the fact that he stays healthy. But this kid, he will be a generational talent, he, and he will win multiple ball doors. He's insane, bro. That goal that he scored today, and he, he hit the crossbar, like, like I mentioned, like he hit the crossbar on a chance just like the one, and then the second time he gets it, it's just, I mean, Lewandowski knew he was going in before it actually went in. If you see Lewandowski, the clip, he's celebrating before the goal with the ball went in. And you know what, for me, bro, Barcelona this season has been a disappointment in my opinion because I don't think we're going to win any trophies. We'll see what happens on Tuesday against Napoli if we go through in the UCL. But La Liga, we got the three points today. I don't think it's going to happen. In the UCL, with the amount of injuries we have, and even before the injuries, I don't think it was going to happen either way. But the one trophy that I'll take away from this season is the development of Lamin Jamal. That is my trophy. I'll take that trophy because this kid has given us a bright... Like, this kid has, has, has just... I mean, bro, he's got, me, he's got me looking into the future hopeful, bro. I'm thinking, holy shit, yes, we're in a bad financial situation, but at least we have Lamin Jamal. At least we've seen what Paul Kowarski can do. At least we've seen Margiu come off the bench and make an impact at times. At least we've seen Roque come off the bench and do something. And again, I know Roque is not from La Masia like those other guys, but still the young talent on this team is there, but it all starts with the 16-year-old, bro. He's insane, man. What was that today? He's so good. He's so fucking good. Yes, sometimes he loses the ball. Yes, sometimes he makes sloppy passes. It's fine. He's learning. The fact that this is just him learning still is insane, dude. I've never seen a talent like Lamin Jamal. I'll never see a talent. And you could say I'm glazing, and I am, bro. I love this club. And the fact that this kid, we can claim him to be our own, like as a fan. He's from La Masia. A La Masia kid. A la Messi. A la Xavi. A la Iniesta. Like, it's amazing, dude. It, it, it's so amazing to watch. And I'm so happy. I'm so hopeful for, what, for the career that he has ahead. I just hope he can stay healthy, man. That's all I really care about, about Lamin Jamal. I hope he can stay healthy. Um, and this game today, I mean, he he just keeps he just he's been Barca's best player this year, in my opinion. He's been the biggest apart from maybe Gundogan and Frankie Young. And Pe I mean, there's Barca's had some good players this year, but Lamin Jamal, I mean, he's been a revelation this year. He's my trophy. We we don't have to win anything this year. My trophy is Lamin Jamal. We saw this year this kid's gonna be the future of this team, and that's I, I'm so happy about that. I'm so happy about that. And Mallorca was actually coming into this game with some hype. You know, they're in the Copa del Rey final. They had beat him, they had beaten Girona in the Copa del Rey semifinal. They beat them in the league last week. You know, uh, Aguirre has a team playing some good football. And you know, today they really didn't they really didn't do much. You know, we didn't really do much, but they didn't do much either. I mean, they, they had what? I think they had one chance, one real chance in this whole game. And it was mostly in the first half. In the second half, they didn't really do anything. So again, I give credit to Chavi. I give credit to Oscar, the brother, because today this team, again, like I said, was depleted because of injuries. And you know, we ended up actually winning the game. So I'm happy, man. You're not going to see me sit here and complain. I'm not going to be this type of fan. When Barca had their full team and we looked like shit, I'm going to complain. Because that's unacceptable. But now that we're basically playing, like I said, one true midfielder in the first half with Gundogan, I'm not complaining, dude. I'm not complaining. I'm happy. And, to, and now we have to get ready for Tuesday against Napoli. And hopefully Napoli slip up and something happens. But that's our most important game in the season. And I hope we can go through. Because I would like to see Barca in the UCL quarterfinals. And especially because hopefully by that time, Frankie Young and Pedri can hopefully get a little bit healthier and then maybe play in those games. And then we'll see what happens. But again, I'm not putting, I'm not, I'm not too hopeful about that. But I do, man, for me, it's just, this game was, um, it, it, it makes me happy because I know, like I said, I want to reiterate, Lamin Jamal and Paul Kouarsi give me a sense of hope for this team. And I, I know most Barca fans that are watching this and hearing me talk right now, they kind of do feel the same way. And I tell you, Barca fans watching this, if you made it all the way into this part of the video, our hope this year, our hope, our hope for the, our hope, our trophy, sorry, what the fuck am I saying? Our trophy, I tried to make that shit all dramatic and cool, and then I ended up studying like a fucking idiot. Our trophy this year is Lamin Jamal. He is our trophy, man. He, he's just, he's insane. The fact he's only 16 years old and turns 17 in July. This kid turns 17 in July. He, he's, he should be, he's like a sophomore or junior in high school, man. And he's, he's arguably the best player on FC Barcelona. How sad is that? But also how crazy is that? But that just goes to show you that, 
you know, even in the dark times, there's also bright spots. Because if Barca were going through this great situation right now, if we were like the best team in the world, if we had all these great talents, we could just go out and buy all the best players, we probably don't see Lamin Jamal for a couple years. Or maybe he gets bought by another team who saw his talent and Barca's like, we're not going to use this kid, we just sell him to another team. But the fact that Barca are this, are this bad, it means that we can give a, a kid like Lamin Jamal all this playing time, and a kid like Paco Arce all this playing time. And again, I don't love that we're playing them all these minutes because I, I, I fear for their health and the fact that they might get injured and have significant injuries, which I hope never happens. But at the same time, I mean, the fact that we get to see these kids play and we're going to get to see them for the foreseeable future is a blessing to me, man. So again, this game in and of itself, I'm not going to complain about the, about the performance too much because Barca are depleted with injuries. And we have to obviously rest. We rested some players, some starters for the game on Tuesday, which is going to be our most important game of the season. I want to say this, by the way, um, Joao Felix is just not good to me. I've seen enough of him. He's super inconsistent. He had a, he had a chance today where he had a 2v2 with Marguiou and he just dribbles into a Mallorca player. Like, what are you doing, bro? He comes across as too selfish sometimes and he doesn't have the pedigree. He doesn't have the, he doesn't have the resume to be, to be doing shit like that. Look, I thought like earlier in the season he was great, but if, 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 the, if the reports are true that Atletico Madrid won 70 million for this guy, take him. Don't take him. Go ahead and take him. Take him now. I don't, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of what I'm seeing from Joao Felix. That's just me though. I don't know how about, how, about how you guys feel, but I'm not, I'm not liking what I see. He's too inconsistent and he, and he holds onto the ball for too long. I just don't like what I see. I thought Rafinha today before he came off, he was fairly decent as well. I, overall, the team today, do I think there was one really bad player? Really? No. I think most players were kind of like medium and then Lamin Jamal and Paul Kouarsi were kind of stand out and Gundogan as well. Um, Lewandowski, like I mentioned, came off the bench and showed a spark. Victor Roque comes off the bench once again and shows a spark. I don't know what the fuck is going on with him and Xavi. The fact that he doesn't play more, but he has to play more in my opinion. But yeah, man, that's really all I have to say. This game was super fucking boring, uh, but I'm happy we get the three points and I'm happy that we get to see Lamin Jamal score another banger, bro. What a goal that he scored, cutting, on, uh, cutting in on his left foot. It's just a thing of beauty, man. That kid is a generational talent. But yeah, now we get ready three days of rest for our most important game of the season on Tuesday against Napoli. Hopefully, Rafinha can be healthy for that game and hopefully the team comes out at home and gets a result and we can make our way to the UCL quarterfinal for the first time since the 2020 season. But yeah, man, that's all I got to say. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Let me know what you guys thought about the game. Are you happy? Are you unhappy? How do you feel about Lamin Jamal, about Joao Felix? Everything that I talked about, let me know down there. I'm pointing out my dick right now. It's kind of weird. Let me know down there on my cock. No, I'm kidding. That's fucking gross. Ew, bro. Just sign out. I love you guys, man. Have a good one. Peace out. My mic fell too. Bye.